Merton College, Oxford, which was founded in 1264, is one of the very few special places in my travels that truly made me feel I had stepped backwards in time. I was here because of my interest in mathematician Henry Briggs, who taught here from 1619 to 1630. But I was also interested in Merton because J.R.R. Tolkien had taught here as well. It seems to me that despite 300 years having passed between the time of these two men, that many features of the campus would have looked very much the same for both of them. Before continuing with Merton, we're going to pop over to Gresham College, London, which is where Briggs worked prior to Merton. Gresham is about midway between the British Museum and St. Paul's Cathedral, just off Holborn Street in central London. It has been in multiple locations over the years and only moved to this location in 1991. Henry Briggs was the first professor of geometry at Gresham in 1596, a role he kept until 1520. Gresham has been providing free public lectures for more than 400 years. I was fortunate enough to be in London for a talk on Alan Turing and John von Neumann and code-breaking in April 2016, but it was held at a different location, nearer to St. Paul's rather than on the Gresham campus. It was a wonderful talk given by Professor Raymond Flood. If you're going to do mathematical travels, one tip I have is to always look for talks being given in the town you're visiting. It's often the case that a college or university or museum or other institution will have a free talk available on math or science by a really excellent presenter. But back to Gresham for a moment. It was while Briggs was professor at Gresham that he undertook the arduous travel from London to Edinburgh in order to visit mathematician John Napier, who had just published his work on logarithms. With the public transportation we have today, it only takes a bit more than five hours to get from London to Edinburgh. But for Briggs in 1615, it took four days to travel this distance, which of course would require another four days of travel to return. But it was worth it to Briggs, who was extremely impressed with Napier's invention of logarithms. Once he got to Napier's home, Merkiston Castle, he stayed for a month, and the two of them did a lot of mathematical work together. Briggs repeated this journey in 1616 and had plans to do so again in the summer of 1617, but Napier had died in April of that year. Not only did this mean that the trip was off, but it also meant that the baton was passed to Briggs in terms of furthering the work with logarithms. Both Napier and Briggs agreed that switching them from Napier's system to a base 10 system was desirable. To this day, base 10 logarithms, sometimes called common logarithms, are also known as Briggsian logarithms. Briggs was at Gresham for another couple of years after Napier's death, but then was appointed first civilian professor of geometry at Merton College, Oxford, which is where he lived and worked for the rest of his life. Merton's gatehouse dates from the early 1400s, making it about 1000 years old when Briggs arrived. Not only the college, but the Oxford street that it's on looks to me as if almost nothing has changed in the 400 years since Briggs's time. Even with current students in the picture, if you squint just a bit and ignore the backpacks and the tennis shoes, this still might be a scene from hundreds of years ago. I was here specifically to find the grave of Henry Briggs, which is inside the chapel. I ended up visiting the chapel more than once, attending services and an organ concert, as well as seeking to pay homage to Briggs. This exquisite organ was not here in Briggs's time, of course. It was installed just 10 years ago in 2013. Most of my pictures are from a visit in May 2022, 
I was back in Oxford in spring 2023, but I made the mistake of visiting during spring break. Since it was not term time, no services were being held, nor was the campus open to visitors, so that's definitely something to look out for if you want to make a visit. Despite his genius, Henry Briggs was a very modest man, and his grave is very modest as well. His only inscription is the Latinized form of his name. No images, no symbols, no coat of arms, not even his dates. Compare that with that of Henry Saville, which is also in the chapel and who was a contemporary of Briggs. Even though I knew to look for Briggs' grave in the narthex of the chapel, his grave was still hard to find. So after a service, I approached one faculty member who connected me with another who knew the general area where it could be found, and together we found it. We spent a great deal of time in the grounds, which I found to be gloriously beautiful. It truly was like just stepping into another world a place set apart. In my reading about Briggs, I had come across information stating that he had created a sundial that still existed on a wall of the chapel. So on my way out, I spent some time in the front quad looking for it. I found it on the north side of the eastern wall of the chapel, or at least I imagine this to be his, given the description I read and given the date, which is during his time here. And so I post this video in honor of Henry Briggs, a humble man with an amazing mind whose name lives on 400 years after his death.